Felix here. Happy Thursday morning to you. Welcome to our pre-market life. What's happening this morning? Well, jobs. Jobs and jobs is essentially what we're looking at this morning. And they are actually moderately positive, the numbers. It's the first time we've seen an actual increase here. And does that mean the SPY is going to push above you know, 3.8 or thereabouts and, and really start a proper rally? Well, actually, it's possible. It's possible we might continue to be this short squeeze situation that we are seeing here. None of that's really fundamental. That's just like momentum kind of the shorts getting squeezed, the, the guys on, on puts getting squeezed out. So let me show it to you. If you haven't already, by the way, get your hands on UBS's terrible list of nine stocks. Um, that it's the not what not to buy list. If UBS slash, so it's felixfriends.org slash UBS9, felixfriends.org slash UBS9. It's a free benchmark. It shows you uh, bad stocks for once. Uh, why do I show you bad stocks? Because sometimes that's actually more insightful than getting a list of what I think might be good stocks. So here is the data. Let me just... Um, yeah, here we go. So initial jobless claims out. And just take a quick screenshot of this so we can see it a bit better. And then they also run through like the key events, the key macro, the key headlines and everything else that's moving the markets today that I think would be pretty good to know. So we got the jobs cuts out an hour ago, which were about 10K, 8K higher than expected. So that was good news because we want more people to be laid off in this weird world that we live in. Jobless claims have also come in somewhat higher than expected. And that's really a first for quite some weeks. The continuing jobless claims also coming in a little bit higher than expected. So we're expecting here 1.335 million. We got 1.36 million. That's you know at least an improvement in the right direction. Uh, the four week average though, that's kind of a funny one. Not the straightest line, is it? Four week average is actually a little bit lower than expected. So those um that's number is, is is a little bit disappointing. So it's sort of like a moderately good number. Now, how's the market reacting to this? The markets were looking a little bit gloomy before we started here. Let me just open a, a live chart. Um here is one as well. Oh, so that's the bond market. Um, so yeah, we're suddenly seeing uh, NASDAQ and uh, S&P 500, uh, well, I wouldn't quite say rallying, but at least turning from red to green. So that is definitely positive. Um, S&P 500 now at 3,783, which is a significant improvement over what we're looking at just a few minutes ago. Let me have a look at the minute chart here. And there you go. Can you see that? That's the worse than expected unemployment data and the market loving that the markets that are lapping that up um still a little early it's one set of data it's one week of data it isn't you know that key here but uh, if we manage to break through kind of this sort of 3800 peak up here somewhere that one there we break through that then we're really flying at least for a bit uh, but at the moment that's still a fair distance to gap here but yeah, we, we were we were there on the on one on Wednesday at one point at the height of the market, and then we came back down again. So uh, interesting day, but it's coming back down. People are waking up and realizing it's not that big a move, but it's still something positive at least. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, good morning, how there to create uh, share share with us where you're based, guys, in the chat. It'd be nice to see where the whole community is is here. Um, Colin thinks we're going to get a rug pull after the Fed meeting. Well, yeah, I, I don't think if you watched my video on that last yesterday, I, I, I think it's a little too early for a fundamental turnaround. Um, bit of roundup on the news today. Um, European stocks under pressure broadly, uh, basically just sentiment. Um, DXY was up a bit today. The US dollar uh, guilds are once again lagging. Uh, the bank uh, rating agencies have held the AA minus rating for the UK but uh, with a negative outlook. So that's a bit of a warning, basically, to the government there. Um, bit of macro stuff around. Here is that Fitch firm UK at AA minus uh, outlook revised to negative from stable. That's not really what you want if you are a uh, first world country. So that's a bit of a bit of a, a hit for the UK. And um, German industrial orders data coming in worse than expected, minus 2.4%. So Germany really, really heading for that recession there. 
uh, EU um, European construction PMI in in proper recession level, although slightly improving. German global construction at 41. That's pretty hideous. Anything minus below 50 is usually a pretty hideous. Um, now the Fed is going back on its kind of road trip, telling us how tough they all are. Why? Because the market continues to price in one rate cut in 2023 and the fed really doesn't want us to believe that so that's kind of the challenge they need to get us back up to where they want us to be so there is obviously a significant gap here we need to kind of gap up from a fed perspective so they are not fully there yet with the credibility that they really want to see and that's obviously an issue for them if you look at um earnings not much happening this week constellation brands to add is that today? Yeah, it's today. Uh, McCormick also today. And then Pepsi next week. And then we start to get a little bit more serious with BlackRock, Delta, Domino's, Walgreens, City, JP, Morgan, Stanley, the two Morgans, uh, Wells Fargo, and so on next week. So lots of bank data coming out next week. And that's something I definitely watch out for. That has a significant impact on the market. If you're trading options, uh, if you're part of our community or doing it on your own, um, be mindful of those dates. Because none of the following is financial advice or any of the, any of the above. You know that by now, don't you? I think you know that by now. If you have any questions, uh, put it in the chats. Um, you're in, as are in northern Italy in New Hampshire. How lovely, Nick. Uh, you're in Wales. Lovely. I hear bulls roaring in the background. Let them loose, says Moon. I saw your comment on that yesterday, Moon. Um, I like your sentiment. Um, I know you watched my video yesterday. I still think we have a little bit to go. And there is also something, I was just preparing a video for later today. Um, normally, when you get very, very significant increases in the Fed funds rate, which is the yellow line here, you break something. Um, so, you know, from going from 05 to 08, you know, rates went up massively and we got Bear Stearns collapsing. We got BNP Paribas you know, um, subprime mortgage uh, crisis, global financial crisis begins. We had 2,000 interest rates going up, Greenspan doing his bit, and, you know, the, the the bubble burst. Same thing in the 90s. Every time that typically happens, uh, we kind of get this happening. So we are here, and nothing is broken yet. Well, the Swiss have broken a few, few things, but nothing quite substantial yet. So uh, that's a little bit what I, I you know, I'm not, I'm not one of these doom and gloom people, but there is something to sort of bear in mind. Uh, for me, the whole credit derivative swap industry is, is one thing that we do need to watch out for. And uh, we might get plastered over with uh, just banks like Deutsche and banks like Credit Suisse and so on, sort of getting bailed out by some sort of strategic buyer or some sort of government underwritten type thing. Uh, but, um, you know, there is there is something bubbling somewhere, usually when you have so, such loose monetary policy for such a long period of time. And we ha it hasn't reared its ugly head yet. So I, I'd watch out for that. Um, you went to Rome once. You felt unsafe. Oh, Rome's amazing. One of the most beautiful places in the world in my view i'm very sorry but unsafe there. where were you hanging around in rome i never really felt that in rome i always felt it was just glorious but there we go um what's your take on who blew up the pipeline us or russia yeah who knows i mean i yeah really who knows um it, in a sense works in both both of parties interests which is always an interesting one Uh, how about you do a collab with with Marcel? Yeah, we do occasionally touch base um, on 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 Twitter, and yeah, I'd love to do something with Marcel. He's a, he's a lovely guy. I, I know he's going to the Neo launch event. Yeah, so maybe we could do something after. Uh, that'd be an interesting thing to do. Sometimes like timing gets gets in the way. Is Visa a good stock in a recession? Says Akraf. Well, is it a good stock in any? I always think good stocks are good stocks in all environments. I think that's really the key it's not really about timing it so there's visa actually we just hit the where, where the update button go there we go uh, use something like our stock tracker dashboard or any other dashboard that you can get your hands on this one's part of our patreon and um, here is visa so if we stop the script from running for a second here so what, what why do i like visa i own quite a bit of visa that doesn't mean you should but um 
like quite a bit. It doesn't mean like, you know, I'm, a, I'm not a sizable shareholder by, by, from a visa perspective, but it's a sizable part of my portfolio. That's what I mean. 80% uh, gross margin, 64% operating margin. That's pretty staggeringly amazing. Return on equity, 42%. Love that. It means you give them $100, so they create $42 profit per year. Um, whopping free cash flow. Earnings per share have grown 17 or 18% over the last five years on average per year. That's pretty staggering stuff. So it's just, you know, forward PE lower than the current PE. That's what you want to see. It gets cheaper and cheaper and cheaper if you buy it today. 97.9% is owned by institutions. So it's not just me who has this view that Visa is a pretty, pretty uh, incredible business. I don't think the world would really function without Visa, to be quite, quite honest with you. But obviously, do your own research. Um, what part of Rome looked like the ghetto? Uh, what, what, where were you in Rome? Were there not beautiful ancient building, 2,000-year-old constructions everywhere and, you know, pillars and just the center and glory of human civilization? Um, churches at literally every street corner. Uh, you can't walk three steps without seeing some sort of amazing church from the 16th, 17th century. Um, you were clearly in the wrong part of Rome. Uh, give it another shot. Um, Start somewhere near the Colosseum and sort of work your way uh, through um, towards the river kind of thing in the right direction. It's actually beautiful everywhere in the center. Stay within the old city walls. Maybe that's the way to do it. Um, <clears throat> Chris, is Hong Kong giving away half a million plane tickets? Really? Okay, interesting. I haven't seen that. What do you think about the Twitter deal going through, says Stefan? Well, it's kind of like Elon being forced, which it really, isn't it? I mean, I... I, I not sure at this point if he really wants it. Uh, he seems to want to create some sort of WeChat type uh, platform, which maybe he will, maybe he won't. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I don't think, I don't rate Twitter as a business. I'm not really quite sure why you'd buy it. Uh, here's Twitter on our our chart. It's just been horribly run. I mean, there's obviously room for improvement. 60% gross margin, that's brilliant, right? That's pretty nice. Uh, that's like Snap and everything else. Not as good as Meta, but still decent. But then operating margin, minus 18%. A business that old does not manage to pay for its overheads from revenue. That's pretty horrific. Negative return on equity. So you give them $100, they lose some of it every single year. Uh, earnings per share growth, 15%. Well, Meta has been 31% in the same time period. So they're not catching up. They're just falling behind. So I personally... Wouldn't, wouldn't give him a dollar, but um, what was the data for, for uh, unemployment? Uh, we just, we just uh, run through that. It just came out. Let's have a quick um, retrace then of our, our roots here. So jobless claims came in a little higher than expected, about 10% higher than expected. Continuing jobless claims also kind of creeping up a little bit here, a little bit higher than expected. Job cuts were also substantially higher than expected, but still pretty moderate. At 29,000 for September, we're expecting 22,000. So heading in the right direction from a Fed point of view, and if you if you take into account the JOLTS data, there was a little bit more forward looking, which is the job uh, opening data from, what was it, Tuesday? Or was it, if it was. So um, yeah, it's kind of pointing in the right direction and the market is liking it. The market, if you look at SPY, this is when the data came out, this is minute by minute, it has, it has gone up a bit. We're still pretty much at zero pre-market or, or, or slightly negative. Um, so, you know, it isn't enough from a macro point of view to really move the market, but it is heading in the right direction, better than bad data. <clears throat> um, Rome is great. Andrea, I know you're in Italy. I, I also think, I think central Rome is, is, is really pretty safe. Um, I've never really encountered anything. There's probably, a, as you say, some suburb somewhere that's unpleasant. Um, more more data. Well, yeah, we've had about a week of data that's showing the economy is slowing. Uh, I don't think that's enough for the Fed. I don't think this is enough to kind of hold off the 75 basis point rate hike in November. But I don't think a lot is going to change there. Um, Rome is a wonderful place. It is indeed. We can definitely agree on that. Um, Okay, if you have any, any other questions, Rome related or otherwise, chuck them in the chat. Uh, we'll glad, gladly uh, run you through it uh, and do my utmost to answer all questions here. If we look at um, futures, uh, they are sort of like flattish now. That's really, I think, what we're looking at. If we look at the VIX coming down a little bit, dollar is still going up a bit. If we look at... Um, 
the live market here, pre-market. Let's have a look at what stocks are actually up and down. Firstly, let's start with QQQ. QQQ 0.07% up, so pretty flat, a pretty, pretty moderate response to a little, little bit of macro data out today. Tomorrow, we're also getting unemployment data out, uh, which should be showing us something fairly similar, I would imagine. Um, Chinese equities, education stocks up for no particular reason. I think we could actually take this off the list here, really. Snap up a bit, uh, Lucid up a touch, Ride up a touch, Peloton. By touch, I sort of mean 0.2 percent or so. Apple moderately positive, Amazon moderately positive. That's that's helping to lift the market here. Um, PayPal as well, Netflix just in the green. And then um, what's on the on the losing side of it? Some of the riskier stocks out there. I don't know why Etsy keeps getting pummeled. There are though Nike also done 0.8 percent volatility coming down a little bit, which is nice for anyone who's got options trades open. At least if you're on the sell side, like we are. Neo down half a point. Um, Neo, their German launch coming up, of course. Uh, I'll be covering that. So yeah, just sort of a an indecisive market again. I think that's kind of what we're looking at here this morning. So uh, um, there shouldn't be any major data out today, other than what we've already seen. So um, I, I don't really see that with this kind of movement, we get a lot of like um, sort of gamma delta squeeze type stuff like so i i i don't see like huge movements here today actually for once and unless we get some real bit of data in um what were the earnings today yesterday today's the sixth right yeah constellation mccormick yeah it'll, get, it'll, it'll have some impact but i don't think it'll be like massively moving moving the market here Are they, is that out already uh no not not yet not yet so th there we are on on earnings um trading wise we're doing quite nicely we're up 104 percent now on our options portfolio which is pretty decent that's since the beginning of the year so since january 1 which i think is a pretty respectable tally uh, if you want to be part of that community if you have at least a five-figure portfolio then give us a call at felix slash coaching we'll walk you through um how we can get you there a part of our 90-day coaching program with me directly and, and our amazing coaching team. Um, really like, really amazing people. Like people who are super, super smart. I've been investment bankers for 20 years, you know, floor traders, university lecturers for a decade, those kind of those kind of type quality of people. So check it out, Felix Rensselaer, slash coaching. If you're not quite there yet with a five-figure portfolio, that's also absolutely amazing. Uh, starting out is the most important thing. So do and accelerate your stock investing your portfolio building your extra income stream to get to that freedom uh check out felix Rensselaer slash options it's 100 lectures pre-recorded you get to see me trade live every week you have live chat support every week and you get the full protocol and strategy that i have honed over many many years from my experience um that is delivering me these results 140 percent a year so um, joe says your coaches are great i appreciate that joe appreciate you being on the coaching program um we will continue to uh, improve and, and and make the community better and better and better as more and more people join. Um, we'll soon be host hosting three or four group sessions a week. And then of course, there's all the one-on-one -on -one coaching for everybody on the on the, on the the one-on-one coaching. Um, are we going to flip for the upwards, says Brown, Brown Slug. That's an interesting name. Uh, how did you come up with that one? Um, yeah, so the reaction has been muted to this, to this a little bit more muted than I, I would have thought. We got that immediate spike up, and now we're kind of coming back down. Um, people are sort of like, well, it's not really all that much, is it? And part of that, I think, is that the the four-week average hasn't moved an inch. Uh, we were expecting that to go up a little bit. So, yeah, we got a bit more initial jobless claims, but the, the continued kind of like four-week average jobless claims number is um, basically flat. And that's the more recent data, where it's the continuing jobless claims is from the week before. So it might imply that the continued jobless claims next week is going to be a little bit lower, possibly, um, or a bit revised, possibly. So, so you can't see that here. Here it is. So you can see the 1 October average is the same, basically, as last week, whereas the 24th September continuing jobless claims number, because we always get that a week late, is, uh, is up. So we can't put too much emphasis on this because the most recent data is sort of like so so right uh, but some hope in the initial jobless claims numbers going up so it's there's, there's, there's initial there's continuing and there's average it's very confusing i know um <clears throat> i 
you are very welcome to say that. Um, I, I agree with you. I think you want to be cautious in this market. Um, and I think we are being quite cautious with our trades. You don't want to be like super one directional. If we break out above uh, 3.8, 3,800 on the SPX, there'll be a lot of uh, position covering going on and you're going to get that sort of short term, probably unsustained rally, but you will you will see it, I think. And that's a significant risk. It's a real possibility. So therefore, being super, super bearish on the market isn't a smart idea. I completely agree with you on that. Um, Andrea says, smash the like button, get 10,000 free Mullen shares. That might discourage people, Andrea, from smashing the like button. I, I, I well, I'm, I'm kidding on the, on the Mullen. Not really, actually. I don't really want Mullen shares. But yes, do smash the like button. That is encouraged. There'll be no free Mullen shares. So I, I don't really go in for this whole, like, sign up for this broker and get free this and free that. I, I mean, if you want to do that, you can get the links everywhere. I don't think I need to really um, bug your ears with that sort of stuff. Um, Joe, uh, who's your favorite coach? Um, apart from Felix, obviously, uh, who else is your favorite coach? I'd love to hear that. I think, I think Elliot does an amazing job, actually. Super, super glad to have him on board. He's amazing. Uh, 20 years of professional experience as an options trader is pretty cool. Um, he's worked on literally trading floors for like years and years and years. He's trained and held and, and, and managed options, uh, traded trading teams and stuff. So really cool people to learn from. Um, yeah, so overall market sort of flattish. That's uh, that's as exciting as it gets here this morning. Uh, we do have some more excitement to look forward to tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to get the unemployment rate, which is yeah useful. Lots of Fed speeches every single day. There's so many I can barely be bothered to read them. And then next week we're getting a real, real uh, Wednesday. I mean, the Wednesday of our Wednesdays. PPI data, pretty surprise index, very important. It's more forward-looking than CPI, which is consumer inflation. Why? Because they got to produce it first, right? So the input inflation, if it comes down, you see that they're first. And then when they price the products going out of the factories, going into maybe distributors and then going to retailers and so on, uh, that is has, has a knock-on effect somewhere down the road, weeks or months out. So that's a good one. And then straight after that, we're getting the FOMC meetings, which uh, will tell us just how tough that lot is at the at the Fed. Uh, and I think the markets are not going to like it. Followed by inflation the day after, which is also going to be an interesting read. But really, I kind of think the whole of October isn't going to be the key one. You really want to go into, into uh, early November. November 2nd, I think, is the next Fed rate hike. That's really what's, what's going to happen here. Um, any thoughts on Polestar now? Uh, well, the US launch happening on the any any day now. I, I'll do my best to live stream that. The US launch, by that I mean the Polestar 3 built in one of the Carolinas. SUV, I think that's a really good one. I think that's a great space to be in in the US, built in the US. I think that's a huge uh, benefit. And I think that might just get them the kind of attention they actually deserve. I think it's, a, it's an overlooked stock with a pretty good performance from my perspective. I'm slightly biased, I must must admit. But I think they are they're doing a good job from an execution point of view. It's just, you know, more people need to know about it. Um, uh, MDM, well, the Fed wants the market to remember that they're there because the market is is naughty from a Fed point of view. The market is pricing in um, a rate cut by 2023. And the Fed doesn't want that. The Fed wants us to believe rates will stay high for a long period of time. So until the market changes its mind, I think that lot will continue to yabber on any TV channel at any conference where, where people will have them and not throw tomatoes at them, quite frankly. Um, is there a Fed speech today? There's a Fed speech every day, Joe. Um, I mean, I wouldn't. I mean, there's so many of them that I think people don't really care that much anymore. Uh, so today we get Evans, Cook and Waller speaking today. Three of them. So. I think there is inflation in speeches. Like if you give them rarely, uh, people pay attention. If you give them daily, it's sort of like, yeah, I know. I know you've already said that. We know. We know. You're really tough. You made up really tough stuff. Uh, who really cares? GMO, you're obsessed with the protocol, Felix. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very glad to hear that. Uh, uh, GMO referring there to my, my trading protocol, which is has delivered 104% return so far, far this year, which um, I don't mean that in a sort of smug way. I just mean that in a, it works. So if you've, you've developed something in a sense of a, a trading strategy, then it's 
very, very gratifying to see that it works not just in, in up markets or kind of flattish markets, but in crazy markets like this one, which is definitely where we are uh, completely bonkers, this market, and we're making really, really nice money as is the community, which is really cool. So you want to join that? You know what to do. If you have a five-figure portfolio, give us a call at phoenixrents.org slash coaching or six or seven figures, quite you know, whatever it might be. Um, if you're not quite there yet, um, then... Uh, Join the, join the program. We have a pre-recorded 100 lectures. You get to see me trade live every week. You get to see my master options portfolio every week, and I'll ping you when I do the trades and so on. And you can ask us questions every day as well. We have um, uh, fantastic chat support uh, so that you really get this. You really get this protocol. You really get the strategy. So go to phoenixrenzalog slash options, write down the coupon code there. Freedom. Uh, why? Because extra income stream equals freedom, quite frankly. Um, Will lower freight prices help or just drop in the ocean? It will. It will help. And we're seeing them, them, them drop. And actually, one of my, my coaching students is actually in that industry. I shan't name who or which, which company, but um, I have it on good authority that uh, they're losing money, which is not wonderful. But it's just that um, yeah, freight rates have come down quite significantly. Um, but the oil prices or the sort of fuel prices are making the, the the liners lose money at the moment but they've had a pretty good bumper years and and that's kind of how the industry works it's very cyclical uh, but yeah if we go back to pre-covid freight rates or near it at least uh, we're going to have some serious deflation there from a goods delivery point of view um have you gathered the general theme from the fed yeah it continues to be we will do whatever it takes to get inflation down. Rates will go to sort of 4%, maybe a bit more, a bit less, depending on who you listen to. They'll stay elevated for a long period of time. And uh, don't forget us. Uh, that's, sort of, that's sort of the message. We will deliver on low inflation. Uh, when do recessions usually get priced in? Uh, that's an interesting question. Actually, I have a chart on that because I was preparing a video. But as you are here live and asking questions, you get the first glimpse of it. Here it is, uh, Bloomberg. So what's this? This is black line is the MSCI, you know, global stock index. Red is forward earnings per share, and that's a pretty good measure of how uh, the market is uh, is is pricing. So you see, there's a pretty clear correlation, right? Forward earnings uh, go up, stock market follows, uh, and and stock market went up a little bit more than forward earnings, but forward earnings still delivered. And now forward earnings are coming down, but the stock market has overcorrected much more than forward earnings. So two theories on that. Either analysts are just smoking something that makes them feel very positive, and they are massively overestimating forward earnings, and we'll start to find out in about a week's time when the big banks start to, to report, or this sell-off is severely overdone. Um, you know, I let you be the judge of that. I think there's a little bit of both in there, quite frankly. I think we will get some earnings disappointment, but I do also think we are we are pretty pretty oversold. Uh, so it's a pretty significant drop that we are, we're seeing here. Does that answer your question? I hope so. Um, shout out to the Carolinas. Um, yes, a home, home of Polestar 3. Very exciting. If you're around there somewhere, take some pictures. Uh, it's made in the Volvo factory. What's your opinion on SoFi? I like the disruptive business model that they've got. I think... Big banks deserve disrupting. I think it's a really important thing. Actually, I think big banks are shoddily run and, and, and take the mickey. Um, however, it is easier said than done. Disrupting JP Morgan and people like that uh, is, is not as easily done. So I think it's a slow and steady progress. I think they're doing a good job on execution. I think just the whole sector is kind of lumped in with it's risky, it's finance, it's tech that's run. Uh, so I do like it, but it's too early to tell whether or not they'll succeed, quite frankly, because, you know, somebody like JP Morgan could come up with a similar product and, and, and make it even cheaper or maybe even better. I don't know. I think they're doing a pretty good job, I must say, considering they've lost pretty much their entire original business. They're doing a pretty, pretty amazing job. Um, <laughs> yeah, they have a good CEO. Uh, FMC member speech would be a catalyst to move the market today at, at uh, 5 p.m., says Sanket. Possibly, but given that three of them speak, or sometimes even six of them speak every day, I think the market's paying a little bit less attention. To do a chat with Noto, oh, I'd love to have him on the channel. Yeah, he's a, he's a, be a, I'd love to have him on the channel. That's one of the better CEOs out there.
Uh, Nazar, they're on freight. I think it depends on where you are in the in the, in the space. I think if you are um, in, uh, it, it depends. I was talking about the liners, the owners of the vessels. That's who I was talking about, who had a pretty good time of it. Um, I know the rest of the freight industry had a lot of problems, uh, a lot of challenges, a lot of a lot of costs, and so on. So, uh, but those guys had some had some pretty sweet years. Uh, YouTube user, here's the big question, Felix. Can I quit my job to trade options? My spouse's income can keep the house running just about. Um, right. So what I would do is learn to trade options first, uh, do the paper trading, get confident, build it up gradually. Uh, I would then, if you loathe your job, I'd phase it out gradually. Uh, you don't really want to like be throwing the baby out with the bathwater. So you just go to your employer and say, hey, I'll only do three three days a week or I'll work from home or, or whatever it is. Or you find yourself some sort of consulting side gig in your industry. And that way you have not just added a new income stream, but you still maintain somewhat your old one. And then as you get more confident and you do this for longer and longer and you get more and more experience, um, you might decide to ditch that. But I'm always a big fan of like bridge incomes or bridge businesses that kind of get you from where you don't want to be, which is where you are right now, by the sounds of it, to where you actually want to be. So rather than chucking everything out and making a risky jump from your perspective, because you don't fully understand it yet, I would I would do it a little bit more gradually. And that's what I usually say to my, my coaching students is um, don't quit quite yet. Um, and I, you know, I've had these conversations with lots of people who wanted to like quit. And I said, well, there might be a better way to like use the skill that you've developed in your present job in a way that just suits you much more. That could be consulting, some sort of part-time thing. It could be freelancing. It could be, you know, there's lots of variations uh, of, of working that are a lot more enjoyable than commuting to a gray office every day of the week. Uh, so, but yeah, check it out. Uh, give us a call. Go to, go to phoenixrentsalog.coaching, book a call. Let's have a chat about it and we'll, we'll, we'll run you through it. Uh, devoid of luck, no scarf today. Yes, no scarf today. It's quite quite warm here, actually. Nice blue sky as well. Um, undecided on the course, whether you should accumulate funds for a five-fig portfolio or start ASAP. Um, I mean, I'm always thinking start. I think it's always good to start once you have that impetus to start rather than wait and put something off and then something will happen and you'll get derailed and you forget about it. So, um, you know, why don't you... In, in your case, start start with a program. Start understanding it, and understanding the the theory, the the protocol, the strategy. Do the paper trading. Share it with us in the private chat groups, and and you know go through it. You watch me trade live every week, and you build that up. And 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 once you then get to a stage where you say, hey, this is absolutely amazing and brilliant, uh, you could then still always join our coaching program afterwards if you if, if you're so minded, and you know we get you to another level of of more advancedness, if you will. Uh, but yeah, I, I would generally say with life, the people who make decisions, um, yes or no decisions, are the ones who do well. The people who are like let me put this off for a bit. I tend not to do quite as well. Um, do you think the Tesla deal will hurt, um, the, the Twitter deal will hurt Tesla? In a, in a sense, um, Elon might have to sell a little bit more shares. He might be a little bit more distracted. I think Tesla is the sum of Elon, uh, which is also the, the, the biggest risk with Tesla, right? I mean, it's the, it's the key man risk there with Tesla. Uh, although they have come so far, they would obviously survive without him. But would they thrive as much? I don't know. Uh, I think Twitter is a mess. I, I don't know why he's taking it on. Maybe it's some sort of like change the world political type ambition that he has there. I, I, I don't know why. I think in many ways as a user, it's a brilliant product. I think as a business, it's a complete shambles. Um, Danza, you trade Pokemon cards. And I heard from a lot of people that's actually very profitable. Collectibles, if they truly are collectible, are actually a very, very good investment asset class, alternative asset class, and not correlated to the S&P. Uh, colorful art in the background. Yeah, thank you very much. That's me. Um, I, I like I like to paint when I have time. What's the unemployment data released? Are you, okay, let's go back to that in a second. Uh, GMO, you know that's me, yes. Uh, so let me show you that um, data. Where, where, where did it go? We took a snapshot of it. Here is the jobless claims data out for today. Let me move it down a bit so you can see it in its full glory. So job cuts were higher than expected. We're expecting 22K people getting fired. We got almost 30K. That's kind of positive from the, the evil, cold-hearted 
uh, equity investor place that we come from. Initial jobless claims are also about 10% higher than forecast, which is good for the market because it shows the Fed that they're doing their job. Yes, well done, uh, you fat lot. You're making people unemployed. Woo Continuing jobless claims also crept up a little bit more than expected. Uh, the only kind of um, fly in the ointment here is that the four-week average is flat. It hasn't really gone up at all. And that's first of October data, but it's a continuous 24th data. So that's a bit of an, a bit of an anom anomaly here. Um, so the market reacted to that with a sort of initial excitement, which was this here. And now it's sort of fizzled back out to where we were before. So um, S&P down now 0.4%. I suspect the QQQ is doing a similar maneuver markets just down a little bit losing a bit of steam why is that well if you've been watching me for at least a week um you know i was talking about what actually caused the the friday um last two minutes of the day rally and then what followed here monday tuesday wednesday it, it was just 20 20 billion something like that of um s p puts expiring people covering their positions uh, the rally then causes a squeeze on anybody who's short whether in options or uh, or, or equity uh, and that's kind of has unfolded but that's done there is no real need at this level for people to still close positions and, and buy the s p or, or or the index so if we go up to 3800 um, which is up here or 380 basically on the spy then we would see another one of these squeeze type situations where a lot of people would get squeezed out and you get a significant bounce up. But at the moment where we are bouncing around 375, there isn't really a need. We haven't really got any real macro data to push us up. We've got not a lot of earnings yet to push us up or down. So really, it's 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 a little bit of a, of a, of a wait and see approach here to to the market, which are now all broadly down, but only a little bit sort of a cautiously down. Um, show us your collection. <laughs> Thank you. We could maybe do that one day. I don't know how we, how we film that while we're live. The newer card packs are produced in very high quantity. They won't appreciate. Okay, so you, you need to buy like the old stuff. Okay, I see. Um, I'd be interested in learning more about that. We could have you on and talk about alternative investing in, in, in Pokemon cards. Margaret says uh, Twitter has a horrible balance sheet. I think they do. Well, they're losing money, so... Um, I'd never collected Pokemon as a kid. I don't think I was really around. I, I don't know if Pokemon did Pokemon exist. It probably did, but I, I never, I never did. I, I read, uh, I read sort of Donald Duck comics. I didn't really read uh, or, or you know get into Pokemon. Um, what kind of music do you like? Good music of all stripes and colors, really. Anything from really any, anything that's good music, uh, which you can is obviously pretty pretty vague answer, but. Um, yeah, there we go. Anything from lovely classical music, music, you know, your Vivaldi's or Bach's to um, nice R&B or hip hop or good old pop music, especially sort of 80s, 90s. I think a lot better music was produced in the 80s and 90s for the reason that artists made a lot more money then. Now artists make relatively little money except for the sort of top five because streaming pays a pittance. So you get a lot of this kind of mass produced uh, pretty generic um, stuff coming out, which isn't really particularly great. So, but you know, there's still some people obviously out there doing some great stuff. Just a bit more of a, of a bigger challenge for them. Um, you plan to test drive the Polestar two? I'd like to test start, drive the Polestar three, quite frankly, which we're going to get launched in a couple of days. Um, yeah, I think I think the cars, Lawrence. I think you're right. Pokemon probably was around. I, I just I just didn't really realize it. Um, you think I like Candy B? Uh, that's quite funny. Uh, or Cardi B, actually. Rather. That's that's the right one. Um, yeah. What is it? What is it with music videos and people having to be like naked and pink? It's a bit of a strange thing at the moment, isn't it? Um, there we go. So we cut, we've touched upon everything that happened in the market today. We touched upon um, you know naked people in music videos. We touched upon Pokemon cards and paintings. Credit Suisse eyes outside money for investment bank spinoff interesting that's new um jb wong thinks they're worth at least 15 billion which is 50 percent more than their listed price considering a boutique model for advisory deal making um but people are basically leaving that's the problem when you're in that situation the good people leave and you're left with like the average people you're left with all the risk and who's gonna buy it especially when you're not worth a lot 
Um, yeah, I was also thinking they might get some sort of strategic investor from the Middle East and if if they can and get themselves bailed out. Because they, they need they need at least four to six billion dollars, market cap of 10. Um, little challenging, isn't it? So yeah, tough position there for those guys. Should do some community meetups. Yeah, I'd love to do that. Actually, I, I met up with one of you in, in, in Monaco last, not last week, two weeks ago, uh, which was lovely. So, you know, if you're coming through here, let me know, drop me a line. Um, you know what my email is, felix at goatacademy.org. Um, there we go. So broadly a flattish market this morning, not particularly exciting, but actually it's quite nice for it not to be exciting. As options traders, we love the lack of excitement. Uh, you want to join me and um, make a new passive income stream from investing, then check us out, felixrentsalog slash coaching. Book a call, have a chat with us. We walk you through it and see if that's the right fit for you, provided you want freedom in your life and an extra income stream and change your lifestyle. Uh, like as the way I have done, then uh, learn my protocol for trading, uh, which has been incredibly successful even in this year, which has really been a been an unusual one. It's, it's really a one in a 25 years kind of a year and uh, we're making a lot of money which is brilliant so check it out thank you very much for watching thanks for tuning in smash the like button on the way out if you haven't already i truly appreciate that and i hope to see you on the next live stream